right wet where the fish shop was. So yeah. So that means there is the wind up Amberley Slope. Yeah. One at Warrington Green. There is one at Cap uh, Canterbury Road. Canterbury Road. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. There's one opposite the Canterbury Road. Oh, yeah. There's one at the roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's the new one. Then there's us. And then there's a gents barbers and then a ladies hairdressers in in this village. So that's nine. Cool, nine. Nine in this village alone. And then there's all those down Lincoln Road. All the ones down Lincoln Road as yeah. well, yeah. So what are we doing for you today? Um, I normally have a three on the back and sides and a five on the top, and I think that'll do me. Yeah, yeah a three and five. And square at the back, please. Square at the back. I've got a funeral to go to next Tuesday, so I'll, I, Oh, I'm so I, sorry. I, it's, it's, just, it's a mate who uh, he does a lot of welfare work with me. And he, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that'd be fun. But I don't like going in with a really crisp hair, but I like it to have a week's time no, for yeah. it, you know. You need it to settle down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So number five on the top of the fringe, yeah? Yeah, straight through. And I'm also speaking at a conference on Friday, so I need to look fairly smart. So. What, what's the content about? It's the Welsh Resuscitation Forum, so it's all the great and the good of resuscitation. And I'm talking about how to be a better teacher. Yes. Of it. I'm going to put up all of my... Um my photos that I've got when we done first aid. Yep. Um, that was in 20 or 20, I think it was. Yeah. I can't remember now. No, 21. 21, right. So two years ago. So every three years or so? It depends which provider, three or five. Uh, three or four, sorry, depending on. Ours was done by um, my niece, who is a RAF cadet leader. Oh yeah. Which squadron? Uh, one one five in Newcastle. I think that's the squadron number one okay. one five in Newcastle. And my nephew uh, helped it, and he is now in Remi in the army. Oh okay. So if he's going to see this video in TikTok, he'll like it, <laughs> because I'm mentioning Clark. Yeah, he come down and helped with, with it all. Um, but yeah, do you remember me telling you about my nephew who was joining the army? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's in, he's in Wales now. I don't know whereabouts it is. I know he's doing his um, trade training now. Yeah. Phase two. Phase two, that's it. He broke his kneecap just before he passed out. No. Phase one, yeah. Did he manage to graduate? He did graduate, oh. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they sometimes put you back through back courses, don't they? And that's well, yeah, that's what he was worried about. Yeah. yeah, he graduated in February from Harrogate. Okay. Harrogate. Yeah. 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 My granddad was reading. Was he? During the war, yeah, Second World War, yeah. Spent about four years away from home. Well, I don't know what my grandpa was, um, but my cousin sent me all of his war records from the First World War, and he was in so much trouble. He kept getting written up for being in trouble, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, my mum thinks he was in the Black and Tan, but I think that's an Irish or Scottish regiment. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to pause the video because Pepsi's going to go mad because uh, Lily and Stefan are leaving. Let's do it. And she's throwing a biscuit in there. <laughs> Peps, he's gone. He's gone home. You'll see him, You'll see him on Thursday. When I used to take Stefan home, his mum used to hear us like three streets 
away because she'd stop barking. <laughs> Three streets away from where he lived. She loves him so much. She doesn't want him to leave. I was, um, I was around my mum's a few weeks ago and um, she got out my granddad's old, he had this thing that he had made in India which is like a leather, um, like a big purse type thing and it yeah. got all his, his papers in, you know, and it had all these old rank badges. Now he only did national service. Yeah. And he was a warrant officer. A warrant officer, wow. Yeah. And I, I said to them, you never told me that. She said, well, I never really thought about it. I said, well, this is a, you know, W02 he was. Yeah. Um, I said, this is a W02, you know, the wristband they have with the crown on it. Yeah. I said, that's a W02 wristband. She said, oh, I didn't really know that. It's the sort of detail you need to know, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Well, I'm still trying, you know, I spoke to you before about finding my granddad's records because he was captured yeah, by the oh, Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. I still can't can't find anything about him. Now my granddad is my mum's stepdad. So I right, don't yeah. have any biological connection to my granddad. And when I requested it from the war office, yeah. I have no right to look at him because I'm not uh, an actual dependent. Oh right, okay. And it was like but my granddad has no children. He's my granddad. He, he married my nan. Um, and I didn't know my grandpa, because my grandpa died when my mum was between six and ten. She can't actually remember. Okay. So my granddad actually brought my mum up. Right. But the war office said because um, I am not biologically related to him. He's, I'm not allowed to have his war records or his medals. Really? Yeah. Now I'm so proud of my granddad because um, he he fought in uh, Burma. Yeah, yeah. Or is it Myanmar now? Myanmar, yeah. So he fought there against the Japanese. And he was taken prisoner of war. And he was taken prisoner of war. There's a story there. There is a story there. My mum said that she can remember saying that he used to do a lot of the cooking. Um, but my granddad never really spoke about it. Um, when I was in uh, junior school, we done a section on history and, um, you know, the railway, uh, the Japanese oh, yeah, yeah, railway yeah. through uh, Burma. Yeah. And I was telling my granddad, and my granddad said, yeah, I know that very well. And I was like, how comes? And then he told me that he helped build it. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then I was questioning him some more. And then he said he didn't want to talk about it anymore. Which I always find that like anyone who was in the war didn't really want to talk about it. No. Especially if they were prisoners of war. No. Yeah, I'm proud of my I'm proud of both of all three of my grandparents. So I've got my grandpa, which is my mum's dad, that I didn't know, and he yeah. fought in the First World War. I've got my granddad, who is my mum's stepmom, and he fought in the Second World War. Yeah. And then I've got my dad's dad, um, who was in the Irish Army. And yeah. My granddad, um, as far as I know, um, my granddad, when my granddad uh, migrated to England yeah. with my nan, he gave up the Irish army okay. and became home guard here. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know a lot about my granddad's either of them or any of them. I don't really know much about their wartime records. No. It's a shame when it's all available, isn't it? You know? It is. But yeah, because I'm not biologically related to my granddad, I'm not allowed his records. Mm. And it's like, it doesn't matter whether you're biological or not. If you're a granddad, you're a granddad. Yeah, yeah.
So are they changing any of the, um, the stuff again? The guidelines? No. No. Um, guidelines come out 2025 now, so we're at the moment ramping up reviewing the evidence and um, all of the evidence that supports what we do now hasn't changed, you know, I mean, because it's all evidence based now, you know, yeah. so, um, things like doing 30 to 2. The only thing that might change is we, I took um, mouth to mouth out of the lay people CPR guidelines yeah. last time. Um, that might go back in again. Well, in fact, it, it, it has gone back in again, I suppose, technically. Um, but if you're training lay people who've never done CPR or anything in the, you know, before the first time, yeah. you can demonstrate mouth to mouth. You don't actually have to, have to assess them doing it. No. Uh, I mean, we, I remember back when um, my husband, when he worked at the homeless hostel, and yeah. he found someone unresponsive. And they said, oh, you've got to do uh, CPR on them, do mouth to mouth. And he's going, I'm not doing that because I'm known drug user. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the, you have to. No, you don't, no, no. And it was like, oh, God, no. It's, it, you only have to do mouth to mouth. And we've always said this, if you're trained, willing and able. Yeah. And so if you're not trained, don't do it. If you're not willing to, don't do it. And if you're not able to, you know, because you've got an infection or something, you know, yeah. rather, then, then well, don't, I carry, don't do it. I carry, you know, the little fabric holders with the face masks in. Oh, yeah, don't bother. I'll carry them around. Yeah, I think I said that to you before. You did say that to me before, Don't bother, yeah. Because by the time you've unwrapped it, you've stopped chest compressions for longer than 10 seconds. Because you can't, you can't unwrap it, work out how it works, stick it on the face, and then give two effective breaths in 10 seconds. I don't know why they still give them out, first aid copies, except they give people a bit of comfort to yeah. say, well, if I had to do mouth to mouth, at least I've got a barrier. But yeah. I, I, I keep saying to people, thank you. Beautiful. I've, I've even got a white line there. That shows that I've been out more than I thought I'd be. Uh, yeah, you have. You've got to go out into the sun again. Yeah, I haven't been. I, well, I suppose I've been out quite a lot recently. Lovely. Thank you, Lisa. You're very welcome. <laughs> So this is what he's on about, is that I have these on my keys and they are hard to get out. So, and that's the rescue mask. That's what he was on about, wasn't it? It was indeed.